Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Dean Lees, and I'm part of the marketing and engineering team at Buckley Associates. And what we're going to do today is just go through some product updates uh, that have happened at Buckley within the last year or so. Uh, talk about some new products, uh, some uh, new partnerships, and some products that have been updated. And we're going to look at all that stuff kind of from a 30,000 foot view. And, uh, you know, if there's anything that you feel you'd like more information on, please reach out to your local Buckley representative. So here's what that agenda is going to look like. Uh, we're going to go through a lot of different products here. Again, it's going to be uh, a high level view just to give you an idea of where we're at, uh, some products that we're excited about and some things that uh, we feel are important to know about uh, about Buckley. So starting it off here, I just want to talk real quickly about TWA Radiant Panels and uh, introduce Buckley as the exclusive provider of TWA Radiant Panels in the Northeast. Um, they're a leading producer of radiant ceiling panels and systems. They're headquartered in Alberta, Canada in a 70,000 square foot facility. And uh, they're actually a division of price. So we've been doing business with TWA for quite a while. And uh, we've sold some, some pretty large projects with TWA. But now we actually have a, uh, an exclusive relationship with them. And we're working even closer than we ever have with them. And they have a lot of different custom fabrication capabilities. Uh, you'll see in the top right hand picture there, they do, uh, they do curved, uh, they can do other unique shapes, uh, they can do patterns, whatever the project really requires. Um, just a little bit more about TWA. Um, you know, they've done projects all over the place in multiple different markets. Uh, some of those include hospitals, schools, laboratories, airports, uh, athletic facilities are a big one. And uh, like I said, we've been doing business with TWA for quite a while, and we've been integral to some of these projects. Uh, most notably, um, as of late, we were involved with a very large hospital, over a million square feet, where the engineer was providing radiant panels into each of the patient rooms. Uh, these rooms were CFD modeled across multiple iterations and TWA, both TWA and Price helped us out with that process. And they modeled uh, a, probably about 10 different layouts that looked at both the, um, both the, the air distribution and the radiant panel system to determine the optimal layout to ensure patient comfort within the rooms. So for that project, Buckley, Price, and TWA were able to partner together and provide a solution that worked for the project and gave the owner and the engineer a level of comfort with the system they were providing. Moving along to Ebtron, uh, something new with Ebtron is they are now providing an RH sensor as, uh, as an option on their gold series transmitters and flow stations. And, uh, you know, I think everyone in the New England market knows Ebtron pretty well. They're a leader in uh, airflow uh, measurement using their thermal dispersion. And now they include that RH sensor into their gold series flow measurement system. And, you know, historically, when we're talking about RH in buildings, it's not really been that big of a deal. It's not something we're concerned about. But uh, with everything that's going on right now with COVID and, and uh, you know, airborne contagions and aerosols, um, you know, there's been studies that, that say when, when your building is maintained between 40 to 60 percent relative humidity, uh, you know, you can decrease infections. Um, you know, it's been proven that transmission of bacteria in operating rooms is uh, is higher at low RH. And there's been uh, studies about humidity uh, decreased in schools and how that affects the amount of kids that are out sick. Um, so, 
you know, when we're when we're looking at this moving forward and looking for solutions to make building occupants feel safe, uh, maintaining a favorable relative humidity is probably a good good place to start. <clears throat> so why is Ebtron moving into this besides the whole, you know, building RH thing? Well, there's a bunch of other things that we see as well, especially in the Northeast. Uh, there's a lot of DOAS systems and uh, economizer comes into play in those systems. So, you know, with that RH sensor, we can, uh, first of all, we can verify wheel performance uh, by having that RH sensor on both sides of the wheel. We can implement enthalpy control strategies. Uh, we can look at dew point temperature control strategies. And, um, you know, we can do an enthalpy based economizer with that, uh, with that flow sensor, with the RH. And, you know, if you're doing that already and there's going to be a flow sensor in the unit, we can provide that at almost no cost add uh, to the project. So it's really simple to integrate and all the controls are right there. <clears throat> and if uh, if you're interested, the accuracy is uh, is going to be about plus or minus 2% RH and that's that's of reading. So it's it's a really accurate uh, device for the control that we're looking for. <clears throat> Moving along to BKM, uh, BKM is a company that Buckley has been in business with for, for quite a while now, uh, over 10 years, and they were recently acquired by Engineered Air. And uh, basically what that gives us at Buckley is more access to custom manufacturing, um, custom air handlers, exhaust boxes for energy recovery on lab systems. And, uh, you know, it gives us a lot more capability. So uh, BKM units are now being uh, private labeled through engineered air. And, uh, you know, it gives us just a lot more um, manufacturing capability. And here are just some pictures of a few projects that we've done over the past year or so with BKM and engineered air. Um, these are uh, these are lab exhaust systems with uh, glycol energy recovery loops, and um, you know we're providing that structural steel base for the fans. Uh, everything is uh, is you know put together in the factory. We know it's going to fit, and uh, we deliver it to the site. Um, you know you can see in that right. Uh, right hand picture there that's a that's a really heavy duty structural steel base these guys do a really good job building these units and what you don't see here is we're also providing the makeup air units into these lab projects as well so this kind of gives a semi-custom cost-effective option for energy recovery systems in labs uh, the makeup air side and the exhaust side as well and just a little bit more about Engineered Air so you get a sense of who they are. Um, their head office is in Calgary, Alberta. Um, they're a custom HVAC equipment manufacturer. They've been around for, for quite a while now. Um, they employ more than 1,400 people with over a million square feet of manufacturing area. So that's what gives us the, the capabilities, uh, the extended capabilities with Engineered Air now working with BKM. Um, essentially, Engineered Air has acquired BKM, um, and they're producing over 250 million a year. <clears throat> so I'm just going to run through this quick video for you guys. Engineer Air provides superior heating, ventilation, and air conditioning units to clients around the world. We're a custom manufacturer of industrial, commercial, and institutional heating, air conditioning, and ventilation equipment. Our equipment is installed in commercial and industrial applications, anywhere from a small food store upwards to large buildings. Our customers can be anybody that requires um, heating and air conditioning for a variety of applications from straight human comfort to processing 
food to housing students, just a wide variety of applications. Established in 1966, Engineered Air has grown from a small Calgary-based company to an international industry leader. In 1966, the company started with five employees in a very small rented space with one customer. We've continued to have a culture of always providing for next year, providing for the year after and five years down the road. We have the strongest employee base of any HVC manufacturer in North America. Currently, we employ over 1,350 employees in both Canada and the United States. They're the key ingredient that make this operation work the way it does. The design and manufacturing of individualized HVAC units is a complete integration of technology and manufacturing methods, innovative thinking, transparent communication, and the creation of custom products that ensure long-term customer satisfaction. We excel at the ability to be able to modify our product to suit our customers' needs. We can make changes to capacity. We can make changes to the physical configuration or layout of the piece of equipment. As long as we're not breaking the laws of physics, we're able to, to provide them the equipment. Engineered Air's innovative products and services come from a dedication to research and design and giving the employees an opportunity to think on the floor. The drawings that are produced for us to build, they don't show all the detail. There's no diagram in that package to tell our, our pipers how to install this piping in the unit. Okay, so that comes all from experience. Again, all of our product is custom. So the piping arrangement can be very different from unit to unit. And you can see the end product, the lines are very neat. Everything is, is, is put together properly and, and, and looks very good. And the functionality is very good. Engineered Air's highly trained workforce customizes HVAC products that are the most comprehensive in the industry. Our design system allows for our product to be designed for a specific space as opposed to making something that isn't designed for that space work. We are able to do it without turning it into a science project, whereas other manufacturers probably have to go through that process. Private ownership allows Engineered Air to reinvest in all aspects of its business, including research and development. There's not been a year in Engineered Air's existence when we haven't had income from the previous year to continue to grow the company the next. Uh, that money has always been invested back in either machinery, new buildings or people or new technology. We invest over a million dollars a year. We put it back into the company for R&D, for building our plants. It's the main say of us being ahead of the market on, on product innovation, product technology and product quality. Engineered Air is committed to creating energy efficient products. In 2010, the company launched the DJX series of indirect commercial industrial heaters. Energy efficiency is a very important thing right now in, in our industry and our new DJX is a product that is a 90% efficient. So 90% of the heat capabilities that we put into the heat exchangers is, is extracted and given to the air that we're using to heat the space. With global warming and everything else going on in, in the world today, we have to be involved in that and be uh, environmentally responsible um, in terms of providing a product that gives us the best uh, efficiency. Another addition to the engineered air lineup is clean room technology. Clean room technology is providing a space with very clean air that is, is filtered to the to the finite elements to ensure that the, the air isn't contaminating any processes, primarily in pharmaceutical, microelectronic applications. That's where a clean room application would be applied. By acquiring the clean room company, we were able to expand the customer base that we're, we're now dealing with. So the acquisition of the company and the technology to build it fit very well with what we already did on the air handling and refrigeration side of the business. International sales are growing. Engineered Air products have been shipped to Australia, Brazil, New Zealand, Europe, the Netherlands, Russia, China, Japan, South Korea, Mexico, the Caribbean, and the United Kingdom. We've got customers all over North America and some international customers. And in some cases, we've got customers that are in their third generation of buying from us. Uh, the grandsons of those that were buying it from us in the 60s are buying from us today. Engineered Air's commitment to custom manufacturing and product innovation will see the company continue to progress as the leader in the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning industry. It's very gratifying uh, to be able to see what has happened. 
it's not without a lot of uh, toil on the part and sacrifice on the part of an awful lot of people, but uh, there's self-satisfaction in that uh, to see what has been created here and uh, a lot of pride. So that should give you guys a pretty good idea of who Engineered Air is. Uh, we're, we're pretty excited that they've acquired BKM and, and that we now have um, access to, to their manufacturing capability. So moving on to another air handler manufacturer, uh, Novel Air Technologies is a company that uh, Buckley has been partnered with for uh, you know the better part of a year now and uh, they deal in mainly advanced humidity control applications. So uh, you may have heard that, that Novel Air has left the uh, commercial market uh, here in the Northeast. And uh, you know, Novel Air has been a longtime leader in commercial energy wheels and desiccants. They OEM to a lot of different manufacturers, uh, but they've also been building their own units as well. And, you know, we like this technology because Buckley as a company, we provide a lot of chilled beam systems into the market. Uh, we also deal heavily in displacement ventilation. And when you're talking about those systems, uh, you know, a critical piece of it is the humidity control. And this also comes into play for, you know, ice rinks, Novel Air can do ice rinks as well. Uh, it comes into play in healthcare. Uh, we were talking about uh, uh, operating rooms and uh, relative humidity control is a big, big deal there. So, you know, there's a lot of different markets that, that we can fit into with this technology. And uh, basically what Novel Air brings to the table is they have uh, this, what they consider a new class of desiccant that regenerate at lower temperatures. So now what they're able to do, and this is, this is pretty cool. They're able to utilize uh, DX condenser heat for, um, for low grade heat and regeneration, uh, unlike traditional high temp systems. So we're not really paying an energy penalty to regenerate that desiccant wheel. And we can now, with that low energy regeneration, we can deliver low dew points below 45 degrees um, with higher chilled water temps um, above 50 degrees. So what that's going to look like is uh, I just have a little state point diagram here. Um, we have our EVAP coil and our condensing coil on either side of that desiccant wheel. Our inlet air from the space is, we're saying it's coming in at 78 degrees. We're gonna come off that uh, evaporator coil at 55 degrees saturated. Uh, and at the same time, we're rejecting heat to the incoming outdoor air through that condensing coil. That's gonna regenerate that desiccant wheel. And that's gonna allow us to come off the wheel at 75, um, 75 degrees um, dry bulb with 42 grains per pound. That's, and that's about a 30% RH. So we're, we're really drying out that air significantly. Um, and we're able to deliver at very low dew points. Here's a diagram of what that unit would look like, just an isometric. And, uh, you know, basically what we have with this unit is, uh, you know, very good dehumidification efficiency because we're not, we're not rejecting heat through a high temp hot water coil or, uh, or anything like that. We're just using the refrigeration cycle that's already there through the DX system. Um, and this independent humidity control maintains comfort at a higher dry bulb set point. So we're able to deliver at a higher air temperature and not use as much energy, but still maintain comfort within the space. And, uh, you know, we can do these on VFDs. Uh, they're all ETL listed. Um, BMS interface is available. Um, and, you know, earlier I was talking about chill beam systems and, uh, and displacement. And when we're talking about those systems, 
typically those are 100% outdoor air systems. Uh, so in that case, we also have an option where uh, we put an enthalpy wheel upstream of that DES wheel. And uh, that, I have a state point diagram that shows what we're looking at there. Um, so basically we're gonna go through the enthalpy wheel and this was for a project that we actually did up here in Boston, a chilled beam project. And uh, what, what we're gonna do first is that outdoor air is gonna come through the energy recovery wheel. It's gonna pick up some energy from uh, the return air stream. Then we're gonna go through from there. It looks exactly like the DES. DX system. So we're going to go through the EVAP coil. We come off that coil at about, uh, in this case, we were 50 to 53 degrees saturated. Uh, again, we're rejecting heat to that condenser coil to regenerate the DES wheel. And uh, that wheel is going to uh, give us um, 75 degree, basically room neutral air at 45 grains per pound. And in this case, we wanted to deliver primary air to the beams at 55. Uh, so we have a post hot water and chilled water coil uh, that allows us to deliver primary air at 55 degrees at 45 grains per pound. And in a traditional chilled beam system, we're looking at about a 57 degree chilled water entering temp. So our dew point is well, well below that chilled water temperature. So no, uh, we have good humidity control. We're not gonna be condensing across that chilled beam coil. And uh, the other thing that this dry air allows us is uh, less primary air needs to be delivered to the space to meet the latent load because we're taking care of more of that latent load with less air. <clears throat> Again, I mentioned that Novel Air does, uh, does energy recovery for ice rinks as well. Um, you know, if you'd like more information on that, we can get further into it. But for the purpose of this presentation, I'm just gonna move along. <clears throat> so going into uh, commercial kitchen ventilation now, um, Green Heck has recently re-entered this market. Um, and actually at Buckley, we now have a dedicated person to support the engineering community uh, within the Northeast on all kitchen ventilation projects. He came to us from Captive Air and uh, we're pretty excited about, about this. And uh, he's given Buckley tremendous insights into the commercial kitchen market. So, you know, basically if you have any projects, please let us know. Um, you know, Green Hack, as you may know, has a full line to support this market. And with the addition of uh, Colin D to Buckley, we can now fully support this market segment. <clears throat> so relative to kitchen ventilation, uh, Buckley has also recently partnered with Jeremiah's and uh, Jeremiah's is a company that does a lot of different things. They play in a lot of different markets, but essentially what we're talking about here is uh, boiler breaching and venting stacks and uh, generator exhaust, as well as uh, grease duct systems. So Jeremiah's is a German owned company who opened up manufacturing in the U S uh, they're down in Atlanta. They did this about five years ago. And uh, they're really aggressively trying to build their market share in the U.S. And, um, you know, what I like about this picture that you see here is uh, this is it. This really shows their capabilities and, and how nice this product can really be. Um, this is at a BMW manufacturing plant in Germany. They actually won an award for this uh, because of how well it's put together and how, how good it actually looks. So the town gave them an award uh, for something. So part of the reason we have really enjoyed being in business with Jeremiah so far is their engineering support. Um, you know, we believe very strongly in being a solutions driven partner, and that's exactly who Jeremiah is as well. 
uh, their engineering team brings vast knowledge to these systems and turnaround time is pretty incredible for these guys. Uh, they can provide full engineering drawings, draft calcs, Revit, BIM models, uh, as well as freestanding self-supporting stacks. Um, so we're, we're really excited to be partnered with these guys. Uh, and if you have a project that needs it, they can even do FEA and CFD analysis on these systems. <clears throat> so, you know, the main product that we like with uh, Jeremias is the KL Conical Series. Uh, this is a pressure fit that's actually tested to 90 inches water column. Uh, there's no caulking or sealant required. And this is what we commonly see as a failure point in other systems. Um, the, the other thing that's great about this is we can use this for multiple applications. This, this one product has 16 different UL listings. So it basically can be applied anywhere. We can use it for grease ducts. We can use it for dishwasher exhaust, uh, boiler stacks, fume hood exhaust, uh, hot water heater exhaust, the, the it, it goes on and on. <clears throat> and that's just a pressure fit, um, you know, good to 90 inches. So focusing in on, on some other Jeremiah's products and uh, also uh, Van Packer, we're gonna look at some factory built grease stuck work. And I just want to show you guys this video real quick that shows a field built duct system during a 2000 degree 30 minute test. And you'll see how, how quickly this stuff breaks down. So this is three minutes into the test and this is supposed to last uh, at least 30 minutes. And you see there the Jeremiah system after multiple tests. So this is really important when we're talking about protecting buildings and, and use after an event as well. Um, you know, the Jeremiah system, if there is an event within the ductwork, uh, it, it maintains its shape, it holds its integrity, and, uh, you know, it's still ready to go. Whereas that field built system, you can see it got very, very hot within, you know, three minutes of the test and completely collapsed. That that ductwork is no longer usable. And I would argue that it may not even be protecting the building at that point. <clears throat> so for Jeremiah's, we have two different options for grease ductwork. We have a single wall and a double wall. Um, the single wall has a 18 inch clearance to combustibles. Uh, we can reduce that just the same way we would with field installed stuff. Um, you're going to get two layers of one and a half inch fire wrap. So that gives you an outer diameter plus six inches. Uh, we can go from six inch to 36 inch diameters on this. Uh, there's no welding required and the joints and seams are overlapping. So they're protected joints. And, uh, you know, again, the big deal here is there's no welding required. So there's no fire watch. Uh, there's a lot less labor in the field, and this becomes a lot more cost effective than a field built system. <clears throat> uh, on the double wall product, uh, pretty much the same, only we're now uh, insulating at the factory. Um, this comes with a zero inch clearance to combustibles. And the big, big deal here that I like to point out is um, this is UL2221 listed. So this product can actually be uh, brought through a building without a shaft. Um, it's basically listed to, to maintain the rating of a shaft. <clears throat> and then when we're talking about grease duct and, and factory built grease duct, uh, round products don't always fit in the building. Uh, so we also have a rectangular option from Van Packer, and this also carries that 18 inch clearance to combustibles. This is the single wall version 
of that uh, of that rectangular product. Uh, we can go from sizes six by six up to a forty eight by forty eight inch duct. And again, the main advantage here is that there's no welding in the field as there would be with black iron. So it's a flange connection. Uh, and this would be wrapped the same way that black iron gets wrapped. Uh, but again, that flange connection means uh, less labor in the field and less time, as well as no welding. For the double wall product, it's going to be pretty similar to what we were talking about with Jeremiah's zero inch clearance to combustibles. Again, it carries that UL2221 rating, uh, so there's no shaft needed and again, no welding. And per the listing, this is uh, this is actually a pretty big deal when you have large buildings and long horizontal runs. Uh, because of the UL listing on this, uh, we can actually reduce the slope to a 16th of an inch per foot, uh, which is a big deal when you don't have a lot of space in a building. <laughs> One more duct product I'd like to talk about is uh, Q-Duct. This is a exterior uh, duct product uh, made out of phenolic closed cell foam. Uh, we're starting to see more and more of this in the market. It's gaining popularity. Um, <clears throat> what we have here is a, uh, <clears throat> is a patent pending quadruple sealed interlocking joint system. So there's actually no through metal on this product. Um, all the duct systems are built per SMACNA guidelines. Uh, we have either an R10 or an R12 option. Um, there's no fibers in the airstream. It's an aluminum jacket on the inner airstream. And uh, <clears throat> it's completely non-ferrous uh, to reduce deterioration. And we can reinforce this internally. Uh, you'll see on the right-hand picture there that you know, it's been reinforced per SMACNA guidelines. And this comes with a venture clad wrap on it, which carries a 10 year warranty. <clears throat> and what's big about this is the no through metal. You'll see from the thermal image here that we really have no, no loss through that system. So we're really thermally efficient because there is no through metal. <clears throat> And then that's just a picture of a completed project there. <clears throat> uh, so moving along back to Green Heck here, um, and this time talking about their lab exhaust systems. Uh, the Vector team at Green Heck has had quite a few uh, developments in the past few years. They've been working on expanding their line and their offering. And I just want to talk real quick about a couple uh, package control options and new energy recovery options. So the first of those new energy recovery options is we're now able to provide the Vector C series fans with a factory built ERS option. Um, basically what this is is a run around energy coil. And uh, this gives us flows up to 40,000 CFM in three pre-engineered plenum sizes. Uh, we can do up to three fans on that single plenum, allowing for N plus one or N minus one redundancy. Um, all the standard construction still applies as it did on the on the uh, vector ERS systems. Uh, we can do MERV 8 or MERV 13 filters. And uh, this is actually now selectable in CAPS. <clears throat> Another energy recovery option for the smaller systems is uh, we've now added a Vector MH series with a bolt-on ERS option. And this is good up to 15,000 CFM. And what you'll, what you'll notice in that picture there is we've, for these smaller systems, we've gone away from that big energy recovery box uh, because on flows below 20,000 CFM, the payback on an energy recovery system just doesn't really make sense. Uh, so what we've done is made that option a lot more economical with this bolt-on option. And uh, <clears throat> the payback you'll see here is, is four years uh, on a bolt-on coil versus the payback on our standard ERS cabinet. 
is almost 10 years. Um, and again, this, these numbers were put together by Greenheck. <clears throat> so, you know, they're not taking into account Boston energy prices. So for us in our market, it's probably closer to two year payback. And, uh, that's because we've reduced the pricing on this, uh, bolt on option. This is a 30% reduction in system price. So on control packages, Greenheck has started uh, packaging controls with, uh, you know, they've started with the Vector H system. We can do a two by one control system on those. And that comes with a microprocessor control. Very, uh, very similar to what Greenheck provides on the DOAS systems. Uh, and with that system, we can maintain duct static pressure set point and uh, control fan speed sequencing. So if you have an N plus one configuration, we can control that and, uh, you know, do the lead lag sequencing and um, the bypass and isolation dampers as well. So for smaller systems, we now have that control package. Greenheck is working on developing uh, control packages on the larger fans as well, but this is their introduction to that market. <clears throat> So moving on to something a little different here, um, you know, there's everyone's concerned about COVID and the current situation and how do you make building occupants safe? Well, Buckley has a lot of different products that kind of play in that market. And what we've done and what I want to show you guys real quick is uh, we've created a dedicated web page for um, for reducing airborne pathogens and what this site has on it is about 20 different products that fit very well into that conversation and uh you know i'm not going to spend time on each one of these products but there are a few that i want to run through with you and the first of which is uh, the price room air purifier so this is a great system that can be used when uh, you know you have a school or an office building or anything where you are trying to retrofit an existing system and you're looking for a cost effective option to to reduce airborne pathogens and make the occupants uh, give the occupants some level of uh, of safety here and feeling of comfort. And this unit comes with, um, you know, the option for HEPA filtration. We can do bipolar ionization. Uh, we can also do UV in that unit. Um, so it's a research unit that sits within the space and just purifies the air within the space. <clears throat> So back to the presentation, uh, another system that we have for reducing airborne pathogens, uh, Big Ass Fans has actually come out with a, uh, a UV option on their Haiku series fan. Um, so as air passes through the fan, we have a UV up light that cleans the air and helps reduce airborne pathogens. Um, and provides a, a disinfection zone as air turns over within the space. Um, so this can be really effective if applied properly. And what Big Ass Fans is able to do with their Spec Lab program is CFD model the airflow within that zone and make sure that we have good coverage. So that's another option when you're considering uh, reduction of airborne pathogens. <clears throat> another way we can do this, another DSTRAT option, is um, is through Arius, and they do it in a in a very similar way uh, with PHI integration. And I'll just show you guys a little video on that. <laughs> Thank you. 
it um again this was a thirty thousand foot view of of some of the products that we're excited about and some of the changes that have happened at buckley within the past year um thanks for taking the time to to sit down with us i know these uh virtual presentations aren't exactly the easiest but we appreciate your time and if you want any further information on any of these products or you want a focused presentation on one of these products to learn more about them, uh, please let us know. And again, thank you for your time.